we're probably going to be talking about Prison Break. Um, prison you're going to start it off with your thoughts, if that's cool. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll... Your thoughts. So let's start from the beginning of the show. <laughs> like, okay, let's... I, I was going to point out we should start from the end of the show because of the season they did, the last season they did. Yeah, we can talk about that, but let's start with the beginning because the beginning is the most important part oh, of yeah. that show. Like season one of Prison Break may be is, one of the best seasons of TV ever, history. pretty much. Like, and even season two is a pretty close second. Yeah. After that, though, yeah. it gets very convoluted. Um, but season one and season two, oh my god, I can rewatch those two over and over. <laughs> so, do you want to describe what the show's about? Are we rolling? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're recording, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Let's go. Yeah, put the mic in to you when you speak. All right. Let's do it. Yeah, so do you, <laughs> yeah, Prison Break. Do you want to describe, uh, like, uh, what's it about? So, okay, here's pretty much the plot of Prison Break is this guy is in prison. Uh, well, there are two brothers. One is in prison, one is not, and the the younger brother is outside, and he's like the really smart guy. And are we not rolling? We are okay. <laughs> so uh, so throughout the show, he 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 robs a place and he goes to prison to be with his brother with because his brother. his brother is on death row for a crime that that Lincoln, his, the brother, says he didn't commit, and no one believes him. He everyone thinks that. Lincoln killed the vice president's brother. So it's really a story about familial relationships and also like relationships that like bonds you create with people who aren't in your family and what those bonds could mean and how strong those bonds really could be. And yeah. we see that all throughout Prison Break itself. Um, yeah, so the younger brother, he's pretty much a genius and he makes this plan before he goes into the prison to. Since nobody would, nobody would lay his brother out, he has to save him. And he's the only person that, that believes him. So you make this plan, a master plan. He studies everybody in the prison. And he pretty much does do something to get himself in the prison so he can help his brother escape. Um, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty then, much the plot of it. Yeah, and... that's pretty much the plot. But like, there's also like side stories with like Veronica. Who's... Veronica tw uh, Tweener. Yeah, yeah, Tweener, yeah. That was a really sad story, and even uh, the relationship between Sucre and um, oh, Sucre and his love interest too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What was her name again? Uh, Mars. I remember that. Part. Um, yeah, I can't quite remember her name, but like, there's like Sucre is just the um a person in Chicago who got into a petty from, uh... theft crime. I think it was like, yeah, and yeah. he was in prison for like 13 months, but. He was in love with, and he really wanted to marry. Yeah, and he, I think his wife was getting married by somebody. But yeah, his wife was getting married by someone else and because prison. she couldn't <laughs> wait for him anymore in prison. Yeah. And um, Sugar had like two weeks before he could get out. But that that guy's plan, that younger brother's plan, was to escape. So, and he's Sugar, like, I can't Sugar's wait. Like, two I can't weeks. wait anymore. My wife's about to get married. I have to escape. I have like two weeks left, but I have to escape now. Yeah, I I think what Prison Break did a good job of doing was really painting the complex nature of why everyone was in prison, too. Because you have people who, like uh, Theodore Bagwell, who oh did some God. really atrocious things horrible, to horrible. children, to women, to pretty much any... He's done every evil thing you can imagine, pretty but much <laughs> he was also on the team to escape. Right, so it helps play these like it helps really provide these really really complicated relationships, not only with like how people got into prison, but also like how people relate to themselves after the fact that they did these things and are being held accountable for these things. Um, who else? Benjamin Franklin. Oh, I was. Uh, I love Benjamin Franklin. I, I can't remember his story. Can you remind me? Um, he has a daughter. That he wants to see grow up out in pri out, of prison, out of prison in Chicago, yeah. um, and um, he's just really sad because he told his whole family that he was deployed instead of actually in prison, right? And so he wants to be there for his daughter. I think he was like a soldier um, before that or something. Yeah, I think he was too. I can't quite remember the full details of it, but like his goal is to escape prison just to 
still be with his family. Be with much. his family. And from what I remember, he didn't do anything that was really awful. No, not really. I don't think. Um, but he was he had one of the longer sentences. And then if they all got caught, they got another ten years. So like, there's there's a lot happening all at once. And then you also had DB Cooper. <laughs> like they had a DB oh, Cooper yeah. so, um, thing. Yeah, there was this guy who, well, I so did Michael. Michael is pretty much the main character. Did Michael know that guy had money? Oh yeah, Michael figured it out. Oh, it was like, oh. And so Michael figured out the whole case, and then he questioned Westmoreland on it, and Westmoreland was like, "You know what? It's not true." And he said he kept that till he died, until he said, "Go visit my daughter and tell her where I put the money." Oh, okay. And then he told them where they put the money, and that's when they ended up in Tuella. Because <laughs> that <makes laughs> that's where he buried the. Oh body. man, it got emotional before the escape and the and the guy. Oh my gosh, like, yeah, like oh. you'll feel so much emotion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, that so shit made me cry a couple of times. Um, so they were, they were pretty much about to escape, and this guy was he got did he get stabbed? Yeah, he got me? stabbed by, or I think some glass. He got stabbed a few days earlier. Yeah, and um, so on the escape day, there's a rope. They're literally escaping like. I think three people were already over, and this guy was just like, "I can't do it, man." And so he had he had to stay back. That was that was really sad. And then it was also Sarah. Sarah, yes. Oh my god, one of the most complicated characters in the whole show because yeah. she she was the one character that honestly was able to redeem people who were incarcerated. Like she was the one person who was actually like listening throughout the whole show to Michael to Lincoln and she some part of her believed it enough to assist them escape from prison and oh, yeah. um, so Sarah was pretty much the prison doctor and all of Michael's plan pretty much depended on Sarah leaving the door open for one night where they would escape so Michael asked Sarah to pretty much risk everything and she was also and she's the, the governor's, governor's daughter. daughter. <laughs> like, so pr- basically, she could have, cl- she could have gotten the governor to grant Lincoln clemency, but her father was just as corrupt. So, but she, she listened, and she actually like believed that the people who were incarcerated were not all evil. She knew that there were evil people, but not everyone who was incarcerated was e- really evil. And I think, it, was evil. especially at the time, because what that came out in like two thousand seven. 2004, you're right. 2004 to yeah. 2007, and then uh-huh. again in 2017 or which 2018. Which we won't talk about. <laughs> which we, which we kind of can talk about, uh, yeah. but like, uh, it's, not a, it, it's kind of complicated. But, um, well, I think, wait, let me ask you something. What was overall like your favorite part of the whole story? When a bruisey, um, John Abruzzi, the oh, mob yeah, boss, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his whole story. I thought was really, really interesting because, like, he was probably, like, one of the worst ones out of them, too. And T-Bag and him. (laughs) I don't know. That show, like, at the time, too, like, like, a lot of thoughts about, like, carceral justice that it definitely made, like, critiques on. Like, the COs were probably the most corrupt people in the whole prison. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, Brad. Brad, yes. Yeah, Brad. um, Really, really corrupt. And then his partner, too. They all decide to after they break out of prison. They all decide to go chase the money as well. Yeah. So so somehow they they end up finding out, and then they all went after the money for some reason. And then they they came in a little another person near the end. I think his name was Tweener or something. Tweener, yeah. When uh, Mahone. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Mahone. Yeah, who's also oh a really God. complicated Al- character. So Alex Mahone's an FBI agent, who. Who's done as many awful crimes as Theodore Bagwell? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, much, he's just much. done it in the uh, eyes of the state because he's an FBI agent. So he went around torturing people. He went around doing all sorts of yeah. awful things to people, and um, just because. Um, but he got a totally different outcome I than mean. Theodore Bagwell, and the, I think in season three when they flip. The fact that Alex Mahoney's in prison and oh, yeah, he yeah. bag has to get into prison <laughs> in order to get oh, everyone out, so I think oh, is a really interesting dynamic, too, because Alex Mahoney has never lived up to the craft that he did. Like, he never lived up to those awful, awful punishments. 
and stuff, but um, I th- but Theodore Bagwell had. So when you see them in a pa- Panamanian prison, like actually suffering, um, and it kind of switch like that was the moment in that time. Alex Mahoney went from someone who was totally believing in carceral justice, revenge, and that kind of stuff to a redemption arc for them. Yeah. And I think, I think. Prison Break did a great job at really explaining the fact that pe- no person is above redemption. Even Teabag at the end, I we even were kind of rooting for. Like, yeah, even no though one, he was awful, no we were still kind of rooting for him. For him. Um, I mean, he's got, he got his hand cut off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he got it because he's that bad. Like, <laughs> like, but that started his redemption yeah, arc, right? Much. Like, he gets his hand cut off. Oh, he, he's, he, he keeps getting lower and lower for a while. But eventually he comes like comes to the realization of like 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 we do as an audience that no one is above. And I think what they did a good job was like keeping the Redemption. mystery and keep switching the plot between all the characters. So like you think, oh, Michael is the most powerful one, and then you see somebody like, oh, this guy might be more powerful, and then you see this guy miss. I look at my own company like, oh, maybe this guy was running this whole thing this whole time, but like at the end, it's revealed it was this boss guy was pretty much mm-hmm. setting up the whole thing and pretty much the government <laughs> like, yeah. And, yeah how pretty much the government was running the whole thing and somebody could have really died for like just because everybody framed him yeah and, made it and seem like multiple people really did die because, because one that, person yeah. got framed um which is like which does bring a, a really interesting point like i didn't even quite think about it like that yeah like one person was falsely accused and t- like the spill out of that destroyed like a lot, a of, lot Ver- of things. I mean, destroyed yeah. tons of lot. Like I mean, Veronica wasn't even the oh, first that one. one got me crying. <laughs> yeah, that was really really sad because that ended the season too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like we didn't know what happened for a whole year. Yeah. So um, pretty much in season one, they the the gay uh the Michael comes into prison to save his brother. A lot of things happen. We're introduced to pretty much all the characters, and then near the end they. Uh, they Pretty escape. much at the end is escape, but all of season two is them on the run and ending up in Panama, where they go. They go into another prison. But they go to another prison to break someone else out. And it also, he also like. And then in season five, they go to another prison. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, it also like pretty much also talks about friendship between like Sucre and Michael and how. There was a moment where... And even when Benjamin returns at the end, too. Exactly, like, exactly. Benjamin is like, I wouldn't miss this for whatever. Like, you know, like, that was also really important, too. Like, yeah. the bonds, like, they're not family, but the bond of... their trauma bonding. Pretty much, yeah. Really yeah. brought them together. Because all of them didn't really do anything that was awful. Pretty much. So, like... Yeah. like and the, I guess they all felt bad for each other in sort of way, but, like, they, like, they also, like, knew that... If they all got the money somehow and split it, none of them would get enough. But if somebody gets it first, then they would have the whole money, and that was, and they were pretty much. All right, Bonafas, what have you what been you watching? <laughs> what do you think, and like, what have you been watching? So, what do you think first? I think, uh, I think it's, just, it's a nice show. Uh, in my point of view, from your point of view, <laughs> it sounds like a nice show to watch. Uh, it's really intense. <laughs> it has a lot of social commentary. Especially from, like, the time period that it came out, too. It was just, like, it was really, really well done. It remind like, at, at that time period, too, like, you just, you had writer strikes and a lot of other stuff. So there wasn't really, like, a lot of, like, media being made that way. Um, so Prison Break is definitely one of a kind. Um, like, Lost, too. And True Blood. and whole bunch of other shows like that all right um this show sounds like something i could watch you should watch out <laughs> uh, now i'm planning to rewatch it <laughs> i know now you got me back on it <laughs> you can say you didn't like, like season five why you got it's watch. because it happened 10 years after the show had ended and one of our characters had died but they just acted like it was all part of the conspiracy still and then they just kind of brought them back to life and i didn't like how he he also pretty much he kind of like repeated season one the guys in prison yeah and now the opposite brother has to come save him yeah like it's and just it was said in the middle east not chicago 
Yeah, which at the it, when in 2004 they could have never have done that. No, no, no. And so I am happy that now that it is because yeah. Middle Eastern representation in that show was not uh, good. Like it was like really not. And Lincoln gets a girlfriend. I mean, he keeps getting <laughs> girlfriend in every season. <laughs> Which is, oh, I just for, I forgot something. Yeah, Lincoln gets Lincoln. Oh my God, Lincoln is the most broken person in television ever, because he also had a son. Yeah. Oh yeah, LJ. <laughs> he, this show has so many. And then LJ's so whole family people. died, and then LJ has to go find Lincoln all of a sudden. He like was so sad. There's so, so many subplots. Yeah, it's some, 22 <laughs> hours each season. Like <laughs> at some point, Lincoln, Lincoln and Michael, the two brothers, had escaped, and. Lincoln's Lincoln's kid was going to court, and they had to. The two people that the two most wanted people in the state had to go to court to try to get LJ to rescue LJ in court. Somehow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh that yeah. That was intense. It was really intense. That was a good scene though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because and, LJ, of course. And so you have Michael, who's like this super genius, and then the, when they introduce Alex Mahone, he was thinking kind of like outside the box from every other cop. He he. He went to Michael's place. He figured out Michael's plan. He was figuring out as they went along. And I, I think I liked when Michael, Mah- Michael Mahone, when he was first introduced, because he seemed like the good guy. He seemed like the savior. And then he turned out, and he ended up killing Queener at some point. Yeah. And then, like Trevor said earlier, he also, like, the government also kind of turned on him, and he also ended up going in prison. And then he had this different view and everything and in season three where things got even crazier because they had uh, so the fbi agent and the prisoners and everybody had to work together to go steal this to go steal what was it called seller or seller or something oh yeah stella (laughs) silla 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 it was just you have to watch this show you have to it's so convoluted (laughs) okay boniface what have you been watching but like for the next like two minutes me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, I mean, yeah, I've been watching, I mean, I watched Z Nation last year. Z Nation? Yeah, Z Nation. It's, um, uh, it's a pen, an epidemic world where, uh, a deadly virus is released into the world and then people... Like zombies, see. right? Yeah, yeah, but except, uh, one of the person who's, um, his name is Mati, I think, um, he, uh, he, he has the vaccine in his body. He doesn't change even if he gets beaten, which was really interesting. Oh. And uh, yeah, he would actually like he was the cure. If he bites oh, someone, wow. he would cure them. Or that if... reminds me of uh. Wait, keep talking, because that reminds me of another show that I watched. Yeah, I mean, if he bites you, if you have been be beaten, mm-hmm. and it's not for a long period, you haven't changed yet. Mm-hmm. He would actually cure you. But if you were like already a zombie and then he bites you. You would be able to to speak, but you wouldn't be able like to oh, fully be to fully be a human. So, that is really interesting. That dynamic, like that's like much of what we're talking about, like people being able to <laughs> yeah, anyways, come back. Like, um, the season starts with um uh, John Matthew uh being transferred as a cargo, mm-hmm. but take him to DC, and uh, there was like this bunch of people. Uh, two soldiers were transferring him, and then they got killed. One of them got killed, and then they, um, on the way, they found another woman in the way. She was uh, working for the military, and uh, she got part of the group. They convinced her to be part of the group because they needed more people, and the other soldier died. And then there was another group of people who got convinced that they need to take the person to DC so they can actually make a cure for the zombies. It was really interesting. It's like a really whole journey to DC. How is the government involved in the government yeah, so like um in the beginning they made an experiment and oh, it was a government experience yeah oh, and the john uh of john course Matthew, yeah <laughs> john matthew was part of the experiment he was a, a prison member mm-hmm. who uh who was sentenced to death and so they turned him into the experiment. yeah exactly <laughs> there was like bunch a lot of them most of them died but he didn't die when he got beaten they got um because they did like they, they made the zombie virus mm-hmm. and they put patients into the rooms after injecting them with the uh, virus and the cure to see if they'll actually change or just like stay the same. The guy didn't change; he stayed the same even though he got beaten like a ton of times. Um, so, what kind? I I what kind of like 
social themes did you learn from? Uh, it's just uh, what I learned about like social themes. Mm -hmm. Like you mean by like like uh, like just like what kind of commentary? Because like I often see TV as and movies and stuff as like a commentary on reality, or like a is supposed to suggest reality, you know? Um, yeah. So, like, what kind of commentary do you think it was making on reality? Uh, could be as simple as just, like, government overthinking they can do cool things, ends up creating super virus, and that should teach us a lesson. Or it could be like, oh, well, actually, there's this relationship with this character, <laughs> that X, Y, and Z, and, like, you could, like we did kind of with Prison Break, too. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, um, they uh, thought they could, like, create something. Mm -hmm. and then money for it and then uh create a cure for it yeah but it ends up like uh biting them back in the ass I mean, I'm, 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 I'm yeah yeah wrong, wrong yeah. but <laughs> no you're yeah. very right it's an expression like yeah. <laughs> that's where my question came in so it was the government trying to help people or the... were they already so being backhanded the goal was like to cure cancer and create a virus that they can actually solve so they can get money from it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but like instead they got cre they created happens. something deadly that killed the most all of them. But the one person who remained in the room was uh John Marty and there was security outside. Most of the doctor died, but like mm -hmm. um the president gave the order before he died that they need to take the person to DC. Yeah, so This reminds me of kind of like don't look up. Did y'all ever see that? No, I watched part of it. I didn't watch the end, but... I mean, you kind of get the yeah, gist yeah, when you yeah. <laughs> watch the beginning. You kind of understand what's going up. But, like, don't look up. There's a meteor coming. I don't know if you've watched this one of us, but, like, there's a meteor coming to Earth, and basically um, it becomes a very party-line divided issue where some people believe that um, the meteor is going to come and kill us, um, but others believe that... <laughs> Others believe that, oh, we can go mine the meteor because it has tons of um, tons of uh, ore that we need to run our systems and X, Y, and Z. Um, so, <laughs> so there's a whole group of people that are like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't worry about the meteor. They're going to mine it in time, and they're going to save us all. And then other people are like, no, no, we need to worry about this meteor. It's, like, big enough to destroy the whole planet. Yeah, I think that... So when you're speaking of social commentary, I think that kind of had a commentary on like the, uh, what do you call it? Earth change, not earth change. What do you call that? Not climate change. Climate change. I think that kind of it kind of. Went I I definitely think so too, but I think it also just had an idea about like how people are inducted with media and then pour all themselves into opinion that's not necessarily their own or they have the knowledge on. You know, because scientists all over the world were like, no, we can't mind this. We missed our best chance to deflect it. We are going to die. Like, and so, and but, then, no, but people are like, oh, yeah, and living pretty carefree lives because of what the media is and telling so them. So you have Leonardo DiCaprio, who's a scientist, trying to convince the president of, like, what's going to happen, how the world experience is going to end. And the president is just, like, being like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the president's like, whatever, I'm going to take me and my son, and we're yeah, going to yeah. do X, Y, Z. Um, and, and it's not like these people don't care about lives. I don't, I, like, I don't understand. No, like, they just care about money more. Yeah. Like, and, and, I mean, it's tragic, and I think that's really the commentary that it was making, is that, like, the government cares more about money than anyone's lives, and the, um... And they're going to try to sell it to you like they care about your well-being and your future. But in reality, they're just using you as a pawn. I think that was the commentary of the movie. Um, at least that's the vibe I got. <laughs> yeah. It, and it's... I did, couldn't tell the whole time whether it was a comedy or a drama. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of confusing. I was just like, is this supposed to be funny or is this supposed to on? be sad? Yeah, like... it was. It got, like, got funny at some point. And you have Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't know if he had, like, breathing issues or something. Mm -hmm. That one scene. Like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll suggest to watch Z Nation. It's, okay. It's, uh, it's, there's, like, a lot of violence, but it's really funny. 
Okay. Really <laughs> no, I do crack like you up 24/7. Awesome, awesome. I, I don't like zombies, but I watch that. <laughs> if you if you watch Prison Break, because then we can talk about it, because I love talking about Prison Break. Um, Absolutely. what is something you all have seen? We all have seen here. You never watched Breaking Bad. So no. No. And where do you normally watch your TV? <laughs> I have Netflix. HBO Max right now. I have <laughs> HBO as well. HBO Max. Netflix. Oh, so if we all have HBO, we can definitely find an HBO show that we all watch. <laughs> I tried to watch Westworld the other day, but I just I never watched, watched Westworld. Did I y'all watch like... Game of Thrones? Oh, uh, never. I watched didn't Game like it really. So, <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, this, I don't really like it either. These top shows, like everybody watches, I don't watch. Like Squid Game, I didn't <laughs> nah, watch. Squid I never Game. watched Squid Game either. Oh, did y'all watch? Um, how did I just lose? Money Heist. Oh man, you should also watch my Just watch. I'm mostly on Hulu and FX on Hulu. Um, but Money Heist is per, it's, it's on mm, Netflix. It's not. It's kind of like Prison Break. So here's. I'll just give you like. Oh, it's like a heist. Break. It's like a heist situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I saw the ad for it. Yeah. So um, you have like this guy who's like Michael, super smart and mm-hmm. pulling all the moves, and his crew pretty much breaks into uh uh like the main bank of spain or something and you know instead of like being a normal heist where people go in and come out they stay in there for like months make getting money making money printing money and stuff yes. and it gets really complicated <laughs> so they and it, so it's, it kind of goes back to like so like the swat team and stuff they pull outside the bank and they park there and so like they, but they can't they can't break in because there's um, all these other people who are like, well, not kidnapped. What, what is, what's the word for it? Hostage. Hostage, yeah. And so they start calling. And so this guy is outside, the professor who's like Michael pulling all the moves and he's from the outside. And so he was going to start going for him. And then it kind of gets kind of like uh, prison break. With all this plot. <laughs> Convoluted. Yeah, so <laughs> the person who was like running the SWAT team she was a woman. Wait, no, don't spoil this. I want to see this movie. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right, I want to nah, see nah, this. Nah, like, stop, stop. Don't stop. talk about it when you want to. It's a <laughs> really good this. show. Please um, watch it. Um, when, so when you were growing up, did you watch, like, chil- like TV that was aimed for, or movies that was aimed for children at all? Or was it always just... Uh, I don't think <laughs> the rating is really mild. Maybe it would have been different because we come from different, different I don't know. places. It's but. just like, I don't know. Most, like, movies that I watched at the time was violence. Like, Spongebob. No, we never watched for Smash Bros. I was like, or even what American. What kind of movies would you watch where, where you came from? Me? I'll talk about it. Uh, I don't know. I used to watch. Uh, have you ever watched Rambo? It's Rambo, nice. yeah. Yeah. Uh, a Sylvester Stallone yeah, classic. I, yeah, he's a nice. He's a nice actor. <laughs> so, actually, he was. A... Did you ever watch Demolition Man? Oh, no. Yeah. That movies with Wesley Snipes. Highly recommend checking that out. <laughs> where I come from, we mostly watch. Bollywood movies. Bollywood movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Tanzania and India, they're like pretty close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I know. I got you. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of Bollywood movies, when, we, when, when you talk to people from Tanzania, you, you can you kind of get into that. But we also watch like... Did you ever notice that any of the themes in those Bollywood movies, like what, much, what, what, what would be the largest difference between a Bollywood movie and a Hollywood movie, theme-wise and uh, social theme-wise? Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, uh, well, they were not really realistic, but they were enjoyable. But they were the I mean, Hollywood movies aren't really realistic <laughs> either. Yeah, they look real. But I, I, <laughs> that is true. They, I, I, I mostly just really enjoy their stories. How they got complicated. But they, I'm not I, sure how to compare them to Hollywood because, like, uh, Bollywood movies, all all their commentaries and stuff, they would be based in India. Yeah. And it's just different. So I didn't, I don't, I didn't know how to, I could compare that. But, like, I mean, like, would you say there was, like, a, like, in Bollywood movies, you would notice, like, a different style? Like, oftentimes in, uh, like, American, um, like, Disney movies, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's always, you always know when the song solo is coming out, yeah, you know? Yeah, there's yeah. always that song solo that's, like, super yeah. intense and I, super deep and yeah, sad, yeah, you know? Yeah, there's yeah. always that. Like, is there any something like that in... I mean, something those about Bollywood for sure is their music. Yeah. Uh, like, part of the movie is pretty much just a music video, yeah. the dancing like, part, uh... so I don't know if you... <laughs> yeah, no, I have seen that, yeah. yeah that, that's really noticeable, and then 
most of their basically our Bollywood plot is boy goes and save a girl and they marry each other at the end. That's pretty much their whole thing. Right. Like, right. Um, We're gonna uh, wrap up like, for now. Uh, always almost like musicals. For his storyline, they talk a lot about passive aggression. Right, right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Do you, are y'all familiar with what that is? And um, if so, do you often find that it's something that's typically, where do you often experience passive aggression? Wait, wait, wait could you explain it? A little bit. I think um, so it. passive aggression is basically someone who makes a statement that's meant to sound very nice and not. be like, but it's not nice. Or be like, oh my gosh, I love, like if someone's sunburnt, be like, oh my gosh, I love how red that sunburn makes your skin. That's oh, a like, passive, ouch. that's a <laughs> passive aggressive statement, right? Yeah. Um, and so, um, so that being said, are you like, do do you, you where do you often see passive aggression? Just, um, um, most people like when uh when you're in a group of people where where you knew and you don't know much too many people, some people tend to do that because they're trying to trying to tell you something, but they don't necessarily should be saying it. But they don't really mean it. it. They don't really. Mean but it. are they also trying? But like the, it's like an aggressive statement. They're trying to be mean. Right. So I I. I think, um, well, depends, depending on the situation, I don't think you would know when that's being said, but, like, if you think about most things, on like, the people you, you talk to, then you, you, you would kind of get it. That was sort of... Awesome. Yeah. And, like, and it's, it's, it's definitely more of a feeling. Growing up, did you experience, like, a lot of passive aggression, whether it was at home, or did you experience it more at school, or... Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think growing up I experienced that, but I think... Definitely when I was new here. Like, now I'm thinking about it. It is a very English thing to do. (laughs) Now that I'm thinking about it, I can remember moments where I'm like, "Uh, this guy was so nice to me, but he wasn't really. (laughs) Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, Yeah. It's just um, when uh, people tend to do them when they don't have to talk about and then they're trying to be nice, but... I don't think they're trying to be nice, man. I don't think they're trying to be nice. No, they they're trying them. to sound nice they to them. save they're face. They're trying to look and appear nice, but, but, they're, but they're trying to be mean. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah like, what did she say? She's like, oh, what are you going to do, bore us to death with your accounting lifestyle? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know? Funny, but, like, you're telling him that he's not... Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, like, that's passive aggression, you know? And what Steed Bonnet did at the end, too... Um, with with all the notes that he had from, or about each one of them and about their lives, they're like, oh well, d- um, you said your business is going well. Could that be because you embezzled all these funds? Yeah, right. He didn't. He didn't them. ever make a complete accusation. Just making a statement. He was just making a statement that could, or he was even questioning. He was yeah, like, maybe this is possible. Like and then through the actions of the other passive aggression in a way, is supposed to be making someone else act up and play their cards before you play your cards. And so socially, if you're not in that world and you don't have good practice with it, like Blackbeard, mm. you can often find yourself being very frustrated. Oh, I see. And, so... n- and not quite understanding how to get back at someone because you can tell they're being mean to you, but you don't know why. Oh, <laughs> like... <laughs> oh I see that now. Okay. So that's why when Blackbeard went to the other guy, he said, hold on, I got you. I'll show them what press Because, <laughs> yeah, like he's it. part of that world, and he's, he grew up there. He grew up yeah. knowing that um, speaking English, living with these higher-class people. So he knew that that's what the kind of things that they do. And so he knew exactly where to hit them. The only thing he didn't have was information. Right. So now let's kinda... talk about the very complicated way he got that information. Right. I was gonna just so, Jermaine, do you want to talk about when the prince and Frenchie enter the boat? Um, Frenchie? Frenchie's the one with the afro, and the prince was the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so there were two, uh, what is it, uh, black people? African, black people, yeah. yeah. They show up, and uh, they were pretending to be... One of them was pretending to be um, a, prince. The, a prince of Egypt, and the other guy was uh, his uh-huh. servant. And uh, they they got in because uh, they said they are they are the prince. Of course, they're gonna let them in, and uh, they 
or pretty much stealing money from everybody else. Yeah. But like, what was the comment that one of those upper class people made to the prince and Frenchie? Oh, should I forget? Um, I thought he, he told that they were uh, black beer seven, I think, right? Oh, no, they're like, I'm I'm struggling to remember. So if yeah, if I get it wrong, or... if I get it wrong, please correct me. But I think it was something along the lines that, um, that they're the most well behaved and articulate African people oh, that yeah. this person has ever right. seen. Right? Like I think it was that, and that's like really offensive. And you could see that the person who was playing the Egyptian prince, right? Huh. I forgot their name. Um, unfortunately. Um, it starts with an O. But that's all I remember. <laughs> um, the person uh, who's playing the prince, you guys, really offensive. But Frenchie instantly sees what the goal is here, right? Like, is to butter up the person and create a game plan on how they're going to get back on these people that right. basically just besmirched them and all their people. <laughs> like you know, so like, like was that pretty much passive aggression? That way he said that. I wouldn't say that's passive aggression as but much like, as a microaggression, right. which is something we definitely see a lot. Do you know what that is? That was, I think that's definitely more a little bit more common. That's more common in the sense that like we see microaggressions more. Let's talk about it. Put it in the concept of race, right? Sure. We see a lot of microaggressions around race, um, mainly being like, um. One would be like, I think your hair's too curly, right? right, right. <laughs> right? right. Like, like right. you know, that's a microaggression. And so, what that person just said to Frenchie and the prince was a microaggression, being like, "You are the most articulate and well-behaved people." Like, what if they said that about us, being like, "We're the most articulate and well-behaved black people they had ever seen." Um. So I definitely think that was a microaggression, and they both recognize it because they're like yeah, they're offended, they're like, and uh... even the person who the servant of that person right. who's supposed to be learning a lesson from these two people <laughs> like is uh is also understands that too um everyone gets it in the room except for this upper class person who made the state and they, they, they take they advantage of that they take advantage of them not knowing what is actually happening in this situation and realistically i don't like personally i don't think they're really in the wrong here <laughs> like yes they're stealing a ton of money but they're stealing a ton of money off of people who are enslaving their people pretty much yeah um right i mean they're still stealing but like but like you know it's that ethical question you know like are you still stealing if like, do you steal if, from a if, stealer? <laughs> do you, like, and especially if those people are using that money to completely comp keep your people into slavery, right? right? right. So, like, you're just, ta and you're just taking that money from it's them. Pretty much better their work. And so what do they do? So, like, what was their game plan for how to get their money off of the aristocrat? Um, offer them to buy pyramids? Oh, yeah. They did their pyramid scheme. Right. Um, what was their pyramid scheme? Tony, you know this one. <laughs> just like they, uh, the, 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 they pay whatever expenses. I mean, uh, personal property, or whatever they have, even to buy half, to of, buy the half of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then, it's like, and, a, and everybody was obsessed with the pyramid, so they all went for it. Yeah, and like, I mean, that's kind of funny. Like, right, like, how does that work? Like, how is a situation <laughs> like that work? Where the fact that these two people who are pirates. One of which can barely read. <laughs> like, uh, the other one can't. They both somehow can swim. The other they pirates on their swim. ship can't swim. Oh, <laughs> and so they both barely can swim, right? Mm -hmm. And they bar one can barely read. How did? How is it possible that they have convinced these aristocrats that? Well, I think they are princes. Like y you know the answer. You just gotta just. Articulate it for me. But just like by uh, showing power that they have power uh, over something that they actually yeah. You know, but all those aristocrats had power. Yeah, but like they want. Uh, well, they were offering power. They're offering them. power to them. Yeah. So they couldn't so, say no to it. Yeah, but like, I mean, any one of those aristocrats could have also offered power, right? Like, I I think it's a little deeper than the fact that they're like. I think their con itself. Mm -hmm started the moment they went onto the ship because they're both pirates. Neither of them are a prince. Right. 
right? So how did they easily convince these aristocrats? Oh, because they were not from their uh, society and they yeah, were exactly. different they were people. Different, so yeah. and they look different. Exactly. They, like genuinely look different, <laughs> and like and that looking of the difference, or like looking the part, was enough for them to put away their judgment right and just instantly be like okay we accept whatever this is <laughs> and i think that is also in a way problematic too cuz like cuz like you can't just look at one african person and be yeah, like you're an egyptian <laughs> prince like right. you know the, the dude, like, the dude, like you know like that's <laughs> that's how i saw that happen i, don't know I know him. you did too yeah, yeah. y'all looked at me like... and you're like <laughs> and i was like <laughs> I know yeah, you I did too. I just I don't know like, you don't like articulate it. that. And then I think later on the guy went on to say like, "Oh, I can just make it make myself seem like I'm a Nigerian prince or something," and they would get it. Yeah, yeah. Totally and cool so even though that they're going in and well, they didn't even. I don't even think they had the plan to start no, making this money. <laughs> like I think they just like, ended up. Just came right it was, in right it was an opportunity, and they took it. Um. And they're pirates. Like, that's what pirates do. <laughs> they did it literally the most peaceful way they could have. <laughs> Steal a whole bunch of money off of people. And I think that's really something to value, too. They could have gone in like we saw at the beginning, where they just went crazy and everything. But no, these two decided to do a way more diplomatic approach and so instead do a heist. About it, yeah. um, which is way different than what Blackbeard and Steed would have done. They would have gone in, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> parts yeah, chopping yeah, yeah. and everything. But these two, they're like, no, we're going to do a scheme. Um, yeah, we saw earlier how kind of violence it was. Yeah. Like, in a little snippet. I didn't really get it, but. Yeah, and yeah. what did they win there? They won a ship and a ton of gold, right? What did they win? Or they destroyed a ship and they, ship and they got a ton of gold. Ton of what gold, did they yeah. win at the end of the episode? What did, what did our two characters, they got a ton of gold and they destroyed a ship. Mm-hmm. And they didn't even lift a finger. Exactly. Not nothing, exactly. Um, they didn't have it. I mean, they just have to be I mean, smart they about didn't it. Lift a finger mentally. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important scene of that episode was after they got the first person on board and was like, "Don't tell a single other person." Of course, they're gonna go tell other people. Oh yeah, right. Totally. Like, duh. <laughs> like you're like, <laughs> like, and that's what, and that's what they also guaranteed on, right? Yeah. However, the servant that was like that just. <laughs> looked over and it's like I know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, but yeah, instead of telling people, he got it. He understood they get, what they were yeah, doing. they got what they're doing, and then gave them an office. Why do you think that happened? Uh, well, well first I think the the server understood them a little bit because I think the server was a, a little bit different as well from the rest. Yeah, but like yeah. they're but. Yeah, right? Africa is a big continent. <laughs> like, and so, like, so I mean... Like, I know what you're doing, and I can help you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, Africa is a big continent. Of course, he doesn't necessarily relate to them on the fact that, like, they're from the same country right. or have the same culture. But he relates to them in the fact that they've all experienced the same kind of servitude discrimination. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and so which was, is the whole reason why they started this whole thing to begin with. Right. So right? he was pretty much just willing to help a brother out. <laughs> yeah, and that's an important aspect, yeah. is, like... Like, because that, carry, that carries a way larger weight because that person accepted them for who they really are. Yeah, exactly. Rather than this whole alter ego of, I'm a prince and this is my dignitary. Right, So because like, the only way the, the upper class would accept them was if they pretend to be a prince. But the other guy just saw them and was like, I know what you guys are. I know what you guys are. And mm-hmm. let them in. Yeah, and... And and helped like yeah, exactly. met them where they're at and helped like, like yeah, so set up like, a whole line and everything. Think, I don't think they would have gotten in the in the party or whatever if hadn't they said they were princes or something. Yeah, they, not at all. Been left they, out. That person wouldn't even talk to them exactly. if they didn't say they were princes. They would have been treated like servants, and that's that's where they didn't see it was acceptable. And as soon as they realized that, so they, they, had to they made that. their change, and then that person was like, "You know what? You're right." <laughs> um, <laughs> And we're gonna steal a bunch of money from. Them. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Um, but what I didn't get was uh, at near the end. Well, near the end because there's like a couple more episodes left. But they started fighting. Um, the people who bought the t- the half pyramids they mm-hmm. started fighting. Oh, I have a pyramid. Oh, I have a pyramid. Like, yeah. what was up with that? I didn't quite get that. 
I didn't quite get why they all started fighting amongst each other. I, I think mean, all, I think at that all point they all got insulted. heated. I think they all guy. yeah. I think they all got insulted, all got heated, and all got mad at each other because they also didn't know who leaked all this information. Right. right, oh, right. right. You know, like how did someone find out all that information? And I think that was also really, really an important thing that even Frenchy realized and told Steed, um, because. Because after that scene where the person's like, I see what you're doing, and I'm going to, um, and I'm going to give you an office, right? Friend, we catch Frenchie outside, yeah. chilling, <laughs> like having, having a good time. And then he's like, and even the way that scene was shot, our servant is standing well outside of the shot. Yeah. And then we pan over, and then it's like, I see what you're doing. And I'm like, <laughs> and that pan is kind of like the whole thing thing that Frenchie says is that servants they see everything oh yeah at that time servants were predominantly black and brown people so what he's really saying (laughs) they were a part and they saw everything so like they seem like they're far away but like because they're far away they can see everything that's going on yeah no they i think the aristocrats think they're farther away and on another planet however they see everything right they know it all. They just don't have a platform to do it. And or through Steed, through anything. Captain Bonnet, they were able to enact that power. And I think that's really, really cool. Like, I think. Oh, but yeah. I don't really know why they really started <laughs> getting in a fight like that. Besides the fact that they were heated, drunk, and yeah. just felt insulted and didn't really know who to attack. <laughs> and, well, maybe because they were, they were like, how the heck do we all end up owning? Because they, then they think. Well, no, 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 that makes sense. No. Yeah, but I mean, and they didn't even get mad at the people. Who oh, they, I don't think even they even figured out how they just got scammed. Yeah, because yeah. that was fast. That all happened really fastly. That whole ship went up in rain, rain, flames. They didn't even realize they got scammed. And they all just left. Um, the last part I want to talk to you with about that show is the very last scene we saw with the prince and Frenchie. Um, what did the prince... Boniface, what did the prince tell? What did Frenchie ask the prince, and what did the prince tell Frenchie? The um, last scene, I don't remember. I don't quite remember it, that part. Um, it was the last one when they're on the rowboat. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. Memory, memory, memory. I don't um, like wait, like no, I they're don't... rowing away. Talking about like something about like what they got, didn't? Yeah. Is that the power that? Frenchie's said... like, what did we make out with? Oh yeah. What did we get from all the aristocrats? Oh, they get oh, to yeah. they got to pay like every other servant and equally. That... Yeah. That's what I said equally. They he said pay, uh... he said he invested it wisely. He invested wisely. Yeah, wisely. Yeah, he invested yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and but so yeah, who did he invest the money to? Like, where did he put the money if? He invested it. What we just got off of a ship. He did it like we're in the 1700s. He didn't just make a crypto <laughs> transaction. <laughs> like where did that money go to? Uh, the servants. The servants. And yeah, why does he view that too. as a wise investment? Because uh, they were no uh treated equally. Oh my god, why is it hard to say treated? <laughs> treated equally. <laughs> it's one of those words. <laughs> <laughs> and so he pretty much. Because uh, they were probably underpaid or something, so he pretty much just like helped them out. Like, okay, I know this is happening right now, so here you go. And it's, and it's, it's. I mean, I don't think it's, they really stole the money because like they just, it's it kind of pretty much was theirs, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Like, I mean, they stole the money, but, but they like, invested it wisely on the servants. Why did they choose the servants? Why didn't they just give it back to the aristocrats? Uh, because, uh, the servants was one of them. There right. were one of them, and they were not getting paid enough money. Yeah, and they can commiserate with that experience, yeah, exactly. yeah. too. And seeing that and knowing that, like, what probably changed their lives would just be a little bit of money. And plus, uh, the, <laughs> like, <laughs> plus the rich people that were, like, in the other boat, which was on fire. So, <laughs> well, they, I mean, they were all on that boat. They were all on the same boat. Wait, they they all escaped. Oh, they all escaped. Yeah. I didn't see that part, but we only yeah. saw we only saw our main characters escape and the servants escape. 
but yeah, I'm but they're but all like they're you all can probably that. gather that they all escape through oh, Sonics because okay. I bet this next season we'll see those people oh, come back. Okay, That's okay. why I'm saying that. <laughs> like I bet we'll see those people come back this yeah, season. Yeah, they seem they seem like important characters. Um, but um, yeah. So he he says he invested it wisely when he just literally gave people yeah, well, what tons did you of money. That? What I take that away is like this one those people in order to better themselves change their circumstances and no longer be enslaved right needed money Mm -hmm. right and he saw himself in a place where he didn't need that money and he wasn't enslaved in the same way Mm -hmm. um so he gave it to them and that wise investment is a redistribution of wealth to people who need it more at the time right it's not necessary because I'm sure he's gotten some wise investments from other people, you know, <laughs> like, and so it's that it's that paying it forward and that being like, hey, I'm going to this is what you deserve being like you've worked hard for who knows how many years you've been taking years, their yeah. crap for who knows how many years. And this is the one moment where you can bring your life to your own fruition, maybe start something and say you're a Nigerian prince. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like they can actually make something of their lives. And I think that's why he viewed it as a wise investment is that he was giving back to the community. But he also just started seven people with brand new lives and their own freedom. Yeah. And it's True, not yeah. like the community was ever going to give back to them in the first place. Yeah. So. Like if they give the money back to the aristocrats. They would have never seen that money again. In fact, they may have even gone to prison. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Probably, yeah. And uh, they pretty much gave them a new life. They gave them a new life. And they're like, and what I find interesting is him viewing it as a wise investment isn't him viewing it as a donation. Like, he didn't donate it to a certain cause or anything. He's like, I don't know what you're going to spend this money on, but whatever you spend it on, it's on I've invested it wisely. And that's what I think is really interesting. And that's, why, that's also why I wanted to watch that and dissect it, is because it definitely yeah. shows class camaraderie. As well as, like, trauma camaraderie, <laughs> like in the sense that these pirates have all experienced a ton of trauma, <laughs> like, <laughs> and um, like I don't know, it shows like, like how you and someone else can be the same and have never met before, and so he understood what the other people were going through. Yeah, he, and he knew he could help, so he was willing to help, and that's pro- that probably helped him in a way. Just to like kind of grow and stuff. Yeah, and I hope they come back next season too <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as Nigerian princes, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, all f- all seven of them. <laughs> um, the, yeah, that they would be fun it. to they, see. That would be fun to see. That like be, they yeah. worked their literal lives off, <laughs> and now, just by the grace of someone who gave them a chance, who saw them as like like as like in the situation where they got onto the boat in the first place, where they saw themselves as princes, or the aristocrats had to see them as princes right or if we could accept them yeah right and then the servants saw them as people and decided to help they did the same thing to the servants instead of seeing them as servants they saw them as people right and the prince decided to donate all the money or to invest all the money in the people a wise investment a wise investment <laughs> any final thoughts i'm gonna watch this show now <laughs> <laughs> i mean i have a show max right now what are your thoughts around all of what I just said about? I think, um, I don't know. I think, um, uh, uh everyone matters and yeah. should, um, what they made, what they did was like a wise choice. Like, um, to invest in pretty much each other. Yeah. yeah. Like give everybody a choice to do their own thing, but in a correct way. But like actually giving them the opportunity to do their own thing. Yeah, right? Because, yeah. like, everyone has a chance to do their own thing. However, not many people have the freedom to do the that. Sources. Or the yeah, resources. Yeah. And he, he basically gave them the resources to do their own thing. And it doesn't matter how it is. It could even bite him in the butt years down the line. It doesn't exactly, matter. Yeah. He, his choice was to give seven people their freedom instead of keeping the money. Oh, no. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I, 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 I thought it was very well executed throughout, and I thought it did a really good job of explaining the differences between classes, but also 
but also like the differences not between classes yeah classes and like how experiences can be similar and how like getting like you if if you guys can just you don't have to to relate through blood or anything but if just if you just relate through experience that can yeah that's powerful too and yeah makes you understand and just person. stepping in someone's shoes <laughs> every exactly. once in a while that in the <laughs> <It> can really <laughs> really change yeah. and it's also i think it's also like perspective he he knew he you can saw make sure you're not paying for half of a pyramid if you exactly. step into someone's exactly. shoes exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely do yeah to make sure <laughs> exactly. oh, i think we gotta go yes thank you thank you <laughs>